Being honest with you, Lord Sucklington is just happy to feast. Oh, oh, the population. That is improved already. That is improved already. Look, that is no longer suffering. Yeah, this is the sort of thing I wanted to see. Beautiful. Uh, now, this spearman is just unfortunately ruining my plan of getting this iron mine down quickly, but that's fine. I'll just get myself another unit in a second. Just buying a ton of archers here. They're, they're, they're sort of like very ancient era siege weaponry. I say that. They absolutely are not anything like ancient era siege weaponry. Let's get one of these beautiful attacks, and then I'll get the archer to fire over the top. Top. I'll get this attack to fire over the top. Annoyingly, I would have liked to finish that spearman off with an archer, but I guess Lord Suckington will have to get their hands dirty. There you go, look at that. Beautiful. And I might be able to just uh, pull another spearman out to get another kill by getting rid of this wheat as well. I know in the long run I'm ruining the food in this city, but I would need to do it in order to get the city to stay on side. It's just one of those things, really. Boulevard, hello. Have you found your way to this random piece of the... Caribbean as well? No, no, they found me some other way. That's both brilliant and again slightly concerning. You never know quite what's happened here. Ouchie, have you come the long way round to find me in this direction? I don't even know. Sometimes it's impossible to work out how someone's actually found you, but you know what it means? It means we have another trade route. Beautiful stuff, 3,000 gold. I'm just kind of keeping an eye on random people as well. There is a great admiral available right now, the first medieval admiral that gives naval strength. That means the admiral's still out there. We're now actually onto the point where Ericsson could pop up at this point. So maybe saving for admirals is a good move. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out soon. Oh yeah, there we go. Loyalty. Loyalty is good. Having ecstatic cities really helps with loyalty. So that is a wonderful. Oh, there's a spearman up there now. Lord Sucklington, just make your way to the, to the little sort of surrounding areas and... There we go, another beautiful kill. Lovely, and now you can now you can wander off to do whatever it is that Lord Sucklington does. And we're not we're not fighting. I don't know. It's rather it's rather ambiguous at this point. Um oh you can see the spearman has come out to fight me on a different front here. Okay. If you wish to stand and fight, you're very welcome to, but uh, you're not gonna get very far here because I have very many troops in this area. That's a technical term, that very many. And as I rearrange my troops slightly, Beowulf's back. Oh yeah, Beowulf is back. I can immediately just move you over. And from memory, I believe Beowulf's challenge does apply to vampires. So anything we kill with the challenge, I believe, makes the difference. We'll, we'll, we'll test it, but I'm pretty sure we'll get more combat strength for Lord Sucklington as we go. Almost at Swordsman now. Almost. Let me just get this iron mine down. Two turns from that, I can start getting a couple of Swordsmen. That will improve Lord Sucklington even more. I believe I can now also get a Battering Ram. Beautiful. Yeah, a lot of good stuff. <laughs> this, is, this is kind of what I'm doing between turns at the moment, just waiting for the quick deal screen to work out where the luxuries are across the world so that I can buy them, so that I can keep all of my cities ecstatic. It's good fun there we go audience chamber has been finished which means any city with a governor has four housing and two more amenities but i also get a lovely governor title and i think victor might be the needed one although magnus would probably be quite handy as well for chops Victor, I think, is just better for combat and for loyalty, so I'm just going to pop you over into my new city. That'll help to just get the loyalty up on this place. It's beautiful. Uh, iron working almost done now, and look at this. Oh, it's the single swordsman coming out to fight me. You've got to respect them for the, for the hustle. I mean, not for the actual achievement of what they're doing here, because, you know, just by being there, they've given Lord Sucklington more ammo, but but it's, you know, it, it's, it's the... It's, it, it's the idea behind what they're doing is the most impressive thing. Okay, Beowulf is going to absolutely disintegrate these spearmen in a second, so that's good. But I'm just making my way down to this city. I have a battering ram on the way. There's only ancient walls. Like, this is going to be powerful. Beowulf with a great general, 51 strength against those walls. Not worried about that in the slightest. Now this is relatively interesting. You very rarely see this, but Marley will give me the city that I'm after for basically all of my gold, which is like seven or eight turns of gold. It's not very much, but I could just buy it from them. The question is, if I did that, would I be able to retain it? The reason I want to put it on the coast is because it's going to be slightly further away from the capital and it might be easier for me to actually try and keep. But this is sort of where Guinea is roughly. It would be a bit of a gamble. It would be a bit of a gamble, but it depends on how likely it would be that I would be able to make peace with Marley after. Not, hmm, I don't know. Don't know. I've been trying to take on this city and destroy it for loyalty purposes as well, but 
I don't, yeah, this is, this might be problematic. If I were to just take this city, I don't know if I would have the loyalty to be able to keep it. It would be exactly the same as the previous one, right? So it would be uh, four from, no, three from religion, some from effects, and uh, oh, I mean, ha. Huh. You know what, I'm going to do it just for the sake that I very rarely do this at all. Like, I never see the AI offering anything for that much gold. I was just going to buy a great person with the gold anyway. 5,200, just a one-off payment? To that I say, done. I, I I mean, yeah, sure, for the price of war, they allowed me to buy a city from them. Cool. Oh, yeah, look at that. Grievance penalty. Oh, oh that's, that's bad. That's bad. Right, Victor. Over you get immediately. I also need to then put a unit into this city. That'll give me a little bit more loyalty and spread my religion to it as quickly as possible. I then need to get this to work. This probably won't work. This is a gamble. If this city doesn't stick around, then what we'll end up doing is we'll, we'll let it flip. We'll raise it and then we'll just have to come back later and uh, settle, settle this city instead. But like, I mean, it, come on, it's worth the try. It's absolutely worth the try. Right, also Toledo has just fallen. Come on, come on, liberation. I, yeah, I was trading with you, so you need to sort yourself out. Actually, I don't think I was trading with you. Fair enough. Well, next up, I, that's kind of utterly scuppered, skewered. Totally changed my, my, my thought process here. This is mad. Um, what do I do? What's the best thing to do? I think I can just go for navigation schools and don't think about it too hard. Just, just head that way. I could go for cartography, but yeah, navigation schools will help. Actually, I think I have a really clever idea here. So I'm going to take over Toledo. I'm going to liberate it back to Spain because, you know, we said that we couldn't expand Portugal beyond its borders and I've taken a bit more from the top. So I'll give a bit more down below. I don't think I can take any land from it right now, although I have just spent a couple of turns by buying tiles around all of my cities to make sure that I've got all the land I need. So I have done that, don't worry, I did do that. But before I give the city back, now I can actually move my missionary through it and into the sea, <laughs> avoiding Spain's zone of control and all the terrain. And now, now I can liberate it. Ah, uh, that seems balanced. And lo, we have all the favor. 50 gold per turn that liberation was worth. Excellent. And uh, it'll stay Spanish now because the loyalty pressure won't be from me. I will behave and make sure that they can keep it. The Portuguese-Spanish alliance will continue. And annoyingly, my religion has not spread to this city. Hence why I have another missionary on the way. I was like, yep, this is not going to work. Using gold to make gold. It never gets old at all. Ah, lighthouses. Lighthouses everywhere. Actually, it makes me even more food as well, so it's even better. Perfect. Well, we're slowly turning the tide of the loyalty, very slowly, but I've had to chop the remaining wheat in my northern city, and we're going to start chopping down the rainforest as well, because, you know, nothing says happy cities like chopping down the rainforest. Oh dear. Am I going to find anything up to the north here? No other China? No Japan? Hmm, interesting. I'm also a little bit fearful of what will happen when I find Australia. Left alone on this map, Australia tends to do some rather ridiculous things. Actually, although I'm in third on science now, only the Congo and Babylon are ahead of me, so that's that's cool. Babylon's on 21 techs, and I'm on 14, 16 for everyone. And then the next person, Vietnam, on 13. Mayans on 13. Well, and then immediately down to the Dutch on 11. You pile filth on the land and dump it into the sea. Look, a Kikupe, look, I've got to chop down everything so that I can keep my cities. Don't you understand what exploiting the natural resources of the world is all about? It's with reason. I sense an opportunity. One thing I've noticed is that there is a beautiful road connecting my lands to Paris and Lyon. Now, Lyon has just been taken over by Gaul and is the original France's capital, Catherine's capital. However, it's going to fall in two turns. I have unlocked horses and I have 50 just, you know, lying around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a liberation squadron, uh, a bastion of peace finding horses. They're going to make their way over with speed along this road and I'm going to go and liberate the city. That'll be worth 300 favor to me because I've never brought that particular France back in. I could then 
just let them loose. I'm going to get open borders with the Dutch, and then I can go over and liberate Germany, maybe? Although Germany is still in existence down here, so that would only be worth 100. But, I mean, I could actually use these horses, or a few horses, just to run around the map and give me tons and tons of gold. That, that is the best idea I've had all day. Also, my trade routes are getting me, like, 24 gold, 27 gold here and there. It's looking really nice. Uh, St. Petersburg, actually, that's a rubbish deal. There are much better traders available in my northern city. One thing I am wrestling with though is do I sacrifice my pantheon fueled fish or crabs to put Colossus down? Oh, I'm, I'm working these tiles and they're quite good for housing, but it would give me another trader. And you know, I do need traders. I've only got 40 of them available. <laughs> oh dear, I don't even know. What do I want to do? Let's just make another boat. I I'm just going to make another boat. I mean, that's, that's clearly what I want to do. Just boats. Boats all day. Booty, 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 booty. And I think I mentioned this earlier in the game, but remember, we're playing a very European sense of friendship and alliances today. All of my friendships are going to be European civilizations like France and Netherlands and Gaul and Rome. I'm not going to make peace with anybody not in Europe. I just, I just don't feel like it, you know? Especially because I was looking at Africa, and this is sort of on Angola down here, and this is sort of Mozambique over here. Now, thing is, right, the Portuguese colonization over history has changed massively. Like, certain areas are colonized and others are lost, and this map is only so accurate in terms of actually being able to pick out actual countries. I think what I've done is I've sort of picked out one, two, three, four, five cities. If I owned these five cities, I would kind of own the Portuguese colonies on Africa. Just about, just about. The other thing I was thinking about as well was India, because obviously uh, in India and also in the Middle East and things like that, uh, Portugal had quite a lot of sort of little, uh, especially in China as well, like little, little treaty ports or sort of individual cities cities that it held on to. But not land. Not enough land for if I owned a city here, it would be fair play. So what I think I might do is I might, with my alliances, I might try and just give my alliances to the civilizations that would have the treaty ports. So that would be Vietnam, and it would be this India, this would be Gandhi India, along the west coast of India. So I might try and give my alliances there, and that kind of roughly represents it. I think Dido would be exactly the same, because you own, what would this be down here? Sort of Muscat, round about this sort of area? Actually, I think coming into this sort of, is it Dew and Ormuz? Again, the, the geography's a little there. So I think actually, yeah, India, Dido, Vietnam, but these three civs I'm going to try and form an alliance with. I think that kind of works. Let's get temples. Temples will give me more faith, but it'll also unlock my stupas and another two gold per trade route with both of those buildings because they will stack very nicely with my religion and my indulgences. Whoa. Did I mention as well? Spain. Spain is very much, you know, Catholic now. That's not so good. That means that my religion's not going to spread around so easily. It's now contested. I was uncontested quite a lot, and my traders were sending out a lot of religion, sort of in random places, but alas, no more. And here's how we're holding out. We mentioned that Science Victory was fine. Um, as you can see, nobody has any culture right now at all. Byzantium have spread their religion around quite a lot, and I think it's because they've been at war all the time. I keep seeing little pop-ups of their religion being spread. It's literally due to their Byzantium ability, I believe. No one's done any voting yet. Domination-wise, Greece currently is in control of Buda, but they keep losing it, and Gaul is about to lose Leon, as we've just mentioned. So everything is to play for at the moment. I've made my way up to 7th on the score. Look how far ahead some people are. Crazy. But here we go. The horses of, I was going to say war, but more the horses of liberation. They are up and ready to go. I am going to just treat myself to some more liberation horses, but I do need to buy some horses on the open market because I have none. It's just a good thing that I have a thousand gold coming in per turn. I can treat myself to as many horses as I want, really, as long as people are selling them. Ah, yes, there we go. The cowboy himself, 125 gold for all of those horses. Delicious. That means I can get another one and then two more horses. Lord Sucklington, by the way, has benefited from this. Now 36 strength. Beautiful. Can we spread our religion to the city? Come on. Come on, come on. Oh, hello. 
Oh, the loyalty is looking really good. Ah, yes, my liberation of cities is actually removing a lot of the grievances against me, and that is giving me more loyalty. Yeah, we're down to 136 now. That's brilliant. Awesome. And uh, actually, we lost the other religion as well. That did help. All right, well, that all worked perfectly. I think what I'm going to do now, again, is save up my gold, and we can save up about 12,000 gold. It'll take me about 12 turns, and we can have two goes at picking up a great admiral. I am after Leif Eriksson. One sight range for naval units. That'll give all my naval units two with my Portuguese ability and the ability to move on to ocean tiles. That will be wonderful because we can go and look to see if this map does have uh, anything like the Azores, uh, Cape Verde, and if none of that works, then we're going to go and find Brazil and uh, unleash Portuguese justice upon it. Tokugawa is in the game today. Interesting. I really wanted to see how Japan fared on this game, and there's Korea as well. As you can see, we're now moving up to the northern areas of the coast. I was trying to work out if this was Korea or Spy China. I think it might be Spy China. So we're now meeting people, and again, that means we get more traders, and I think it was this city that had the beautiful trade routes that are still available to me. Oh, every time I meet someone, I just get even richer. Richer and richer and richer. Yep, it's Wu Zetian. Very good to meet you. Um, what else to say? Oh, I, I just, I love the color of the borders. That pink and yellow is vividly awful, and I am here for it every day. Has China really not uh, have they denounced me? Have they denounced me? I was going to say, like, have they not invented open borders? That would be a very strange thing. Oh, I just paid two gold per turn for Korea's open borders. Blimey. Even Tokugawa doesn't want to give me enough. What? Why did I pay two gold per turn for that? I, I feel fleeced. I feel very fleeced right now. And Saivir as well. Hello. G great. Every time I meet people, again, more traders. Do you remember my really, really good plan of a liberation horseman army? Um... I literally cannot move through this continent. <laughs> oh, I think they're just going to have to like live in the sea and then just sort of nip in every now and then. But I cannot, I cannot move. There are too many units on this map. It's crazy. Who would have thought that a marathon game would make the AI spam units so much, seeing as that's exactly what I'm doing? Oh my god, I've just seen Norway has 1,591. I would say, what are you doing, Norway? But I know exactly what they're doing. There's just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these Viking longships everywhere. I mean, I'm not even joking. Look, you can't move for them. They are absolutely everywhere. Everywhere. Look at it. They're the most army. China has got 1,332. That's quite a lot. Tokugawa, 1,200. Uh, Grand Colombia, 1,500 as well. Saivia is having a game. Now, I don't know much about Saivia, apart from the fact that she's got 54 population and 10 cities, and is currently in second on score behind Congo. India also doing really well, as is Coupe. So Gandhi, Gandhi up to only 33 population. Not entirely sure why they're doing so well. I, I Actually, I suspect probably from religion and maybe wonders. Religion, 52. Okay, well, that's that's even more impressive due to the fact that neither the Congo or Saivia have religions. So they're just doing it based on empire. Coupe as well is having a bit of a game. 42 population just swimming around. Hashtag just coupe things. There's theology, by the way. Awesome. That means I can get temples and my religious buildings, which I will do almost immediately. Let's just get the temple down. A little bit of extra faith. Uh, and it just gives me gold as well, because all of my trade routes are getting one gold per turn from this city as well. There's the stupa for one more amenity. Lovely. We'll do the same with the temple. I can't quite do the stupa right now, but I'll do that in a second. Oh, yeah, but this is really, really good. Really, really good. I think, uh, yeah, I've got the shrine being built there. Perfect. Uh, and maybe next turn I can afford an admiral and then we can go from there. What do we reckon? Recorded history? Campus districts giving me more science and having an extra governor? I think all of these things sound wonderful. I've got land surveyor on at the moment. It really doesn't do very much apart from being able to just nab those tiles really cheaply, which is really cool. Yeah, there's very little I can do with my government at the moment. I am in that stage of the game where we're just, we're just enjoying things, sitting back, having fun. Himiko. Okay, and she would be really, really good if there were any city-states in this game at all, but there are not. Always remember with lighthouses, you get a housing, but if it's on the coast, if your city centre is on the coast, you also get another two housing. It's really, really good. So you can see, look, it says it's gone from 9 to 10, but if I give it a little wiggle, there you go, 9 to 12. So it's worth three housing, that one lighthouse. Really, really effective. And also, when I put the stupa on, ta-da! Even more faith per turn, even more gold. And let's get 
the first Admiral. Now, you can see it's about 5,000 gold for us to buy. That means the mine's probably about 3,000 gold. I don't think anyone has that level of gold sitting around, but it's always worth checking just in case someone is going to then buy the next one. But there's a great Admiral, and we look immediately, and there is Ericsson. We got lucky. First time round, we got Ericsson. Now, we want Ericsson because if we pop him, all of our naval units can move over ocean tiles, and we can go to South America. That's very important for us indeed. So to do that, we need 6,000 gold, which will be five turns worth of saving it's crazy actually i say that but i'm just gonna keep buying things so it's probably gonna be about seven turns but you know the the thought it's the thought that counts you know it's the thought that counts you know rather than just having a great admiral that can't really do anything i'm gonna retire her immediately three combat strength for all naval units that is not something to sniff at that is really effective 27 gold per turn for that trade route delicious and you can see my horses are slowly making their way through gaul's land this is the liberation force they are very slow at what they do. This city has flipped about three times whilst I've been trying to make my way to the front. But eventually we will make it and we will liberate something. I don't know what we will liberate, but it will be something. And as expected, Australia, we've just met. They have 117 science. That is the highest science that I have found in the game so far. I think they are just behind. Actually, they're on the same tech as me. Wow, fair play. They have 117, I have 121. It is a very tight race, but we are just about okay at this precise moment. But it does mean I get another trader. There's Mongolia, 216 points. Doing very well, doing very well. I don't think they're doing quite as well as Saivia though. Saivia seems to have the edge on the 55 population. So big on population, but still, Mongolia is doing well. I had aimed to build an industrial zone in my city pretty early on, but I'm realizing culture is a bit of a limitation for me and I really want my culture up so my capital is going for a theatre square to start with. I'll plonk it right down next to where I'm going to build the mausoleum. It'll give me a bit of culture. I'll put an amphitheatre in. I'll buy a great work. I already have one beautiful great work of writing which is giving me four culture per turn. I didn't even notice that. I thought I bought a two one because it was only about 150 gold. But no, it's a four. Lovely. So that's massively helping my capital. But I think I can get my capital up to about 70 or push my nation up to about 70 culture, which will massively help. It means I can go to recorded history, get defensive tactics nice and quickly, go to feudalism nice and quickly, get um, alliances and push into the really useful stuff from there. The only problem is as soon as you pick up anything like a new great work of writing, every turn that rolls over, you get about 15 trade deals going, oh, can we buy your book? It's like, no. Actually, I just realized, unlike resources, this is what I'm so used to, things like horses and iron, you can't tell people to go away. But I've just noticed you can press a button with the great work of writing to say, please stop asking for this. I think it only works once on each sieve, but uh, never mind what you're going to do. Oh, my lord. My barb just died and oh no, that's that's my capital. I just lost a population in my capital there. Rubbish. Oh, and a bunch of farms as well. How dare you, Nietzsche? How dare you? I'm nearly passing by Gaul. Look, I'm I am doing nothing nefarious here whatsoever. This is just what I call the Liberation Task Force. They mean you no harm. They are simply here to borrow a city from you. Here's recorded history. That means that I can now pop in natural philosophy, which I'm tempted to do instead of my extra loyalty for stationed units yeah these cities are now really comfortably loyal perfect i don't need that card anymore four extra science per turn when you're playing on this length of game that really does make a difference how are we doing on Ericsson? Oh, next turn. Next turn I can afford. Let's pick up games and recreation. That's only six turns now because we've got such good culture coming in. Victor's looking good. Now, I could pick up something useful like a Pingala upgrade for not, uh, more great people points, but I can just buy my great people. I say that. I've just seen how much Galileo is. 23,000. Oh, even I'm not going to buy that anytime soon. So let's ignore that. But um, let me just think about this. We could go Magnus for settling. I could go Liang for builders. We could go Reina to be able to buy in districts in new cities. That's quite handy. Should we? Yeah, let's use Reina. Let's use Reina for now. That's actually not a bad idea. Um, and then I'll put another governor into this city as well. And then all of my cities have the extra housing and the extra immunities, which is lovely. Yep, I'm, I feel like I'm near to Leon, but, um, but I'm not. Oh no, I managed to actually move, move to there. I don't know if that helped me at all. 
Um, maybe we can just bypass Leon. It's got too many units. Or maybe we can orchestrate a war. If we can orchestrate a joint war on somebody, that could be another way of removing some units. Although it might just make the AI uh, build even more units. I don't know. I don't know. At this point, it could go either way. Here he is, Ericsson. Oh, 5,500 gold. Well spent. Next turn, we will be able to unlock the ability to travel over the water. This tiny ocean to the lands and to the crabs. The dangerous death crabs that have been taunting us for over 4,175 years. No more. No more. We shall go and find what's going on over there. I've got some galleys positioned. We've got some settlers. It's all good. Um, Spain. Spain. Come on. Don't chuck me out of your borders. This is really annoying. We are, like, I need to get through your land, okay? So rude. Um, that is an amphitheater as well. Good. Uh, Lisbon, you're going to need to just produce some quad rooms right now because I don't trust my ability to keep myself safe, even with 800 military strength. I just don't believe that I can keep myself safe. Uh, let's just have another look for a couple of great works of writing. Oh, there you go. Marley will give them to me. That's even better because he was nicking my uh, tiles and now he shall not be. There's another 4-4. Four, four. So we've got two 4-4s four, and a 2-2. Two, two. That means Lisbon's kicking out a bit more culture now and we're on 77 culture per turn. Oh yes, that's a bit better. Lovely. Here we go. One site range for all naval units and all naval units can move over ocean. Now I'm pretty sure... Yeah, alas, it's not my satellites. I did just realize that as I was saying it, it's just my naval units. But these things can do a lot of exploration for me. We can go and figure out what's what. America is somewhere over here. It has been foretold. I tell you what, being able to move my units now is, is just brilliant. Hello, Brazil. Hello. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Yes, I'd love to uh, go and have a look at the Incan lands, but Brazil. What a lovely place this is. What a lovely Portuguese-speaking place this is. Wouldn't it be a shame if something happened to it? <laughs> oh, dear. Especially because you've only got 22 defense strength. Oh, dear, oh, dear. The problem I've got is that I can't get any of my units over the sea. Uh, we've got education on the way, though. 16 turns away from getting navigation schools. Now, these, these are brilliant. Navigation schools will give me four science in each city, so I'll get four, eight, 12, 16 science. But then I also get one science for every two coast tiles in the city. So if we just count together, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So that'll be an extra 14 science on top of the 16. So I'll get 30 science just from building universities everywhere. It's really good. Let's go and explore a little bit more towards North America. Oh, I think that looks like a Bermudan Triangle if ever I've seen one. Yes, of course it does. And the Aztecs. I'd love to know where your capital is, please. I'm sure nothing will go wrong for you. The arrival of the Europeans in Central and Southern America. Totally chill. Totally chill indeed. I wouldn't wouldn't stress about it at all. So here's the problem, right? Portuguese lands, Azores, Madeira, Cape Verde. This looks very much like it's the Caribbean. So this map has very much squished America and Europe together to make sure that the, you know, the Atlantic is, is not crazy big and, and it's all useful. This could be absolutely, this looks like sort of a yeah, Caribbean chain down to sort of Bermuda sort of place. No, I'm sorry, uh, Barbados, not Bermuda. Bermuda's up there, I just said. Maybe this is Madeira, but uh, I, I feel like I need to claim at least something. So when the time comes, I'm going to put one city down there. And I'm going to call it like Azores, Madeira, Cape Verde mess because the map hasn't given me anything. I won't do the rest of the Caribbean, just this one. But I think that's fair. I think that's kind of uh, a random assortment of cities that could well be something that's mine. It probably isn't. Let's be honest. I've probably just stolen it. But when has that ever stopped me before? You know, <laughs> just keep stealing it until it feels like yours. And Cree, meet from the other direction. Look, I've actually managed to get this galley all the way around India and China and through Japan and Korea. We've actually just met the Cree. Wonderful stuff. We've got some good trade routes that are about to appear between Europe and America. Already I found a lovely Mayan city I can trade with. It won't be long until we've got a bunch more. In my endless, fruitless challenge to try and liberate something, Lord Sucklington's going to make their way over now 
towards Seville, which is very kindly decided to uh, vacate its ownership. I don't mind that at all. This man at arms, I'm going to get you to come round as well. Uh, again, it's going to be the case of actually trying to get a unit in range of Seville to attack it. But if I can liberate that, another good chunk of dip play favor and a bunch of grievances that will be lost from me. Actually, the grievances from Mansa Musa have already gone. The world has totally forgotten what we were doing. Oh, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Was that? I think that was Lisbon done. I think I actually have run out of trade routes from Lisbon. That is incredible. My poche. Hello. Good to meet you. Wonderful. There's Rio. Oh, there's Rio. Rio. 39 strength undefended on the coast with 8 population. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. So when you need a little notification to come up in front of the screen and go like, Ursa will remember that. Finally getting around to evangelizing my religion for the first time. And I want to see if the particularly useless but also quite entertaining thing is still there. Here we go, pious merchants, 100% religious pressure from trade routes. Is it useful at all? No. And I will start to spread a little bit more religion. Two per turn, look at that. Actually, it seems to double it coming back in the other direction as well. I'm not entirely sure if that's a glitch or a feature, but um, but that's happening too. 36 gold and also science on top of that. Oh, there's a deal to Rio as well that's giving me science and culture. Goodness me, there are some good, good deals coming along now. Beautiful. Here's Canada, which is always good because if I ever have any diplomatic favor to sell, Canada is always the person I think of first. That must be kind of getting to the edge of, of people that we've actually got to find now on this map. We have a look at the score. There were a couple... No, that's basically it. That's it. Look at that. We've done it. What a beautiful world we live in. What a beautiful world. Actually, I've almost, very almost, navigated the world. Uh, circumnavigated it, I should say. Not navigated it. Um, yeah, I'll do that next turn. Beautiful. Whoa, 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 whoa. A joint formal war against me? Um, I'm sorry. Oh my goodness, Gandhi just declared on me. What? And China? I'm nowhere near you. What are you doing? <laughs> It's like they knew. It's like they knew I needed to be allies with them in order to get my treaty ports. <sighs> right. Well, you know what? The chaos in me is saying that only one thing can happen from this point onwards. I'm going to go through the entire tree and I'm going to see who wants to join in on these wars. I will make the entire world declare war on one or the other, one by one. This will take a while but I will do it. <laughs> That's not a bad result. One, two, three, four, five, six people I managed to convince to declare war on Gandhi. It'll give them something to think about. Uh, the best bit as well is I managed to get both Saudia and Mongolia to declare war, so uh, as well as Indonesia, I think, actually. So yeah, we've, we've got threats from all around. It's quite entertaining. I like it. Um, also, please, can you just let me into Seville? Please, I'm, I'm trying to do my thing and I'm finding it very difficult because you're not letting me in. Not letting me in. Here's the evangelized belief. What am I going to do now? I have more people following my religion than I have cities. So it's got to be something to do with people rather than city count. Culture for every follower of a religion? That might stack really nicely, to be fair. I think better than a culture bomb or like a science bomb from converting things. I think better to get something that just ticks along every turn. I'm going to go World Church. I just get the feeling that the extra culture per turn is really handy. 13 already. And this will start to just infiltrate into people's lands very slowly. Just an occasional follower here and there. Look, do you see? Look, there's some people celebrating the 20k special over in Spain. A couple of citizens here and there. You never know. It'll just slowly infiltrate and nobody will be able to stop it. Oh, that was the um, circumnavigated globe, by the way. Huzzah! Uh, defensive tactics now for Mausoleum and then feudalism for better farms. We're getting through the good stuff now. Oh, like, it's mad when you see four turns on military training. It's because I've got 91 culture and we're still technically in the classical era. We really, really pressed ahead, but all you have to do is go over to, like, modern era. You start to see hundred turn things. We're very much still on historical mode. I'm going to have to tech up a lot more if I'm going to start to beat this mode easily. You know, this felt like such a good idea at the time, but I cannot get anywhere near Leon or Seville because both are just totally surrounded on all sides by this horde of units. Oh, I felt like such a good idea. Here we go, just complaining about it. It's giving me the breakthrough. Look, Lord Sucklington, through they go. We now have a unified border with Seville and I've managed to get myself close to Leon as well. 
Unfortunately, I can't get the city kill, which is really annoying. But what I'm hoping is that even... No, no, I did. Okay, that was a really good roll there. Fair enough. Liberate. 200 diplomatic favor. And next turn, I'm just going to camp out around these cities and make sure that we just keep liberating. It's wonderful. Arkan, hopefully we'll do that in a couple of turns as well. 300 favor. Do I keep it or do I sell it? At the moment, I'll be honest, I am struggling to find things to spend it on. <laughs> but it's okay. I think I might just start getting all the engineers. Thinking about the engineers, these could be really handy. Extra districts. That's really handy. Extra wonder production. Really handy as well. Three walls is less handy, but... I mean, I've got so much gold coming in at the moment. Scientists, merchants, they are already too expensive. Profit I've already got. Yeah, you know what, engineer, I'm going to treat myself to this engineer. It's a bit of error score as well, so that's good. Theodore up next. I was going to very soon get myself the mausoleum in my capital anyway, so that's great. Oh, look at this. The crusading cavalry armada, whatever it is, actually managed to pick up Arkan as well. Uh, we're going to give it back to Germany. There's no way they're going to keep hold of it because they're all the way over there. But, you know, it's always a good thing to see. In fact, actually, there's another city over here now that can get flipped. What's this city? Buda. Oh, that's the old capital of Hungary. There we go. 421 favor now. Oh, now you see, the thing is, I could sell it for an awful lot. Oh, yeah, for, for an awful lot. 200 gold per turn probably I could get out of the AI but I've already got 1,700 so yeah I'm gonna keep it for the next world congress it might take a little while to get round to a world congress uh, at least 52 turns at the very minimum but yeah I like the idea of keeping it so there is defensive tactics I will build the mausoleum imminently and I'm thinking about what to do next feudalism I would normally run for if I needed builder charges but I really don't because my gold is ridiculous I'd get a little bit more food from my farms I guess that would be a good thing but I think alliance are more fun for me right now. Saying that though, Mercenaries has Trade Confederation. That's one culture and one science from all international trade routes. Because I'm Portugal, I get 50% more. That would be worth almost 80 science and culture per turn. I've changed my mind. I believe we're going to go down this way first. So we'll go military training in a second and then Mercenaries, but as discussed before. Actually saying that, I'm going to just take out Maritime Industries. It's really not doing much for me at the moment. We'll go Corvée. I'm going to put Urban Planning in as well. So we've got a bit more production. And here comes the mausoleum in 12 turns perfect that's going to give me tons more yields in lisbon which is good but it'll also stretch my great engineers a little bit further look at this beautiful isidor would be a very good pickup for me Six thousand god i'm getting an engineer every four turns or so just purely from raw gold income which is lovely let's just quickly go for a little bit more on rain no i shouldn't have done that ah i didn't mean to do that i was going to get um somebody into this city never mind i'm on 12 amenities it's not a problem i think i'll be fine who would have thought that it would be a Lord Sucklington guaranteeing the independence of Spain, eh? Look, okay, right, go away, Phoenicia. I'm giving it back. I want the 100 favor. Lovely. Oh, man, someone stole Colossus just as I was about to see adore it. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Never mind. Never mind. We didn't get it this time, but we'll get something else. I mean, an industrial zone would be good, but I'm now thinking, do I want to instead get a theater square? Because the theater square would be, well, a lot more culture, like a lot more culture. Hmm. Now I'll go theater square for now. I think it's universally a little bit more interesting. I'm going to remove this amazing mine as well. I have so much gold coming in. I do not need to worry about production. Production is not an issue for me whatsoever. Yeah, saying that, uh, I'm just going to use this lovely engineer to boost mausoleum through. That should get me to where I need to go nice and quickly. Concepts that you come up with in Civ 6. I like being rich. Yay for amphitheaters. And now I need to wait some time to work out where on earth the great works of writing are because I want those now as well. It's the mausoleum. This is actually really exciting. Science, faith and culture for all coast tiles around Lisbon. This is my Pingala city and my engineers have another charge which is good because it's all I'm doing with my gold right now and buttress boosts nice that's probably weirdly the most helpful thing because after this I'm going to be going buttress and then cartography beautiful look look what it is oh my god I actually have a space for it that is totally accidental I didn't even think about that yes look what I did I deliberately <clears throat> put a thing down for the University of Sancor in this city uh, how how majestically wonderful I am lovely oh here we go education this is a big turn for us uh, okay now we can start to get my unique building down my unique building the navigation school four science one housing one admiral point one scientist point 25 
25% production towards naval units and an extra science for every two coast or tiles in the city. It, it's it's really good. Watch this, 158 science, or bam, 167. Oh, and as you can see, the University of Sankor was built uh, 200 turns ago. Oh, where is it in Babylon? Hang on, there it is. Look at that. You see, this is the problem with playing with Babylon. They ruin everything. <laughs> They probably had, I mean, 200 turns. How many turns of that ago? Like 15 turns? I don't know. Anyway, we tried. We tried. Never mind. Never mind. Uh, there is a navigation school. Beautiful. I'm going to put medieval walls down in every city as well. Looking good. Looking good. We're going to boost ourselves to cartography now, and then I can get my super boats. And I might even just go and uh, nick Rio with my nows. I think that's probably going to be a good time. Have you seen what I'm doing here? I want to settle on this island. I can't get to it at the moment, so I've just put my boats in a ring around it to stop anyone settling it. It's so petty. It's so petty. Oh, Imiko. Hey, that's actually reasonably fun. Um, I didn't need her for city-states, but she acts as a three great general with uh, 44 lifespan. So I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? Feudalism. I don't think that changes anything that I'm doing right now. Am I actually building any wonders anymore? I don't think I am. So I probably should get rid of that card. What I am doing, though, is slowly building an army up for my invasion. So feudal contract it is. And as discussed before, we'll go military training and then we'll go mercenaries. I'm just building a sneaky theater square down in this city. And I'm just going to treat myself to a couple of tiles around it just to make sure that Marley doesn't steal them. Not the desert means anything to me at all. It's totally useless, but... Uh, I, I just like being possessive about things. Liberation again. Let's stock up on this Diplo favor. Tasty, tasty, tasty. You're welcome, Germany. I'll be back in five turns for it again. Lovely, lovely. Lisbon is the biggest city of my empire. We're above 200 science per turn now, by the way, with all of my navigation schools all ready to rock. We've got walls popping up everywhere, which is great. I've got men at arms that are being shuttled out at high velocity, and we are nine turns now away from cartography. Beautiful. A bit more gold from fishing boats, but mainly it's getting across the ocean with my settlers so I can go and put a city down over there. I think loyalty-wise, yeah, we're all good. But it means I can go and attack Brazil. Saying that, Brazil appears to be being attacked. I don't like this. What's going on, Brazil? What's going on? I I don't like this. I, I want to be the one that captures you. Are you at war with, Ma like, Mapuche? Yeah, you are. Oh, dear. Dear, dear, dear. Are you at war with Mapuche as well? No, you're at Lincolns are at war with Bolivar. There is a lot happening on South America right now. I have a feeling there's going to be a couple of boss battles in this game. Grand Colombia are looking very tough as of a Congo. Brazil looks a bit like a pushover, I won't lie. But the others, they look like we could actually have a pretty decent scrap here. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I am a little bit fearful of what we're going to have to pull off. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Doughboy91, Sean Gratis, Portland, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Devil X, Skeptical Bear, Kroger Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Amir E.C., Rom88, Radio Torre, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boy Zorro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truand, Creston, RB Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Ezri Dax, Debel Time, Shoelace. Thank you all for your support. It's amazing. See you all next time. Goodbye. Bye.